Do you see that server there? That's not why we're here today. I just wanted to point out that that's just another chapter in this year's saga about me trying to review stuff and that stuff is either not working <laughs> from the beginning or breaking down during the review. Uh, by the way, my Ovon lab power supply, it's on its way back and uh, they say it's working, but that's another story. We're here today to tear down this defect Geo 5.3 12 volt AC brand name LED spot. It's a Philips master spot warm glow dimmable so uh, yeah warm white 6.5 watts 2700 kelvins to 2200 kelvins 370 lumens 12 volt ac it's made in china but yeah designed here in europe to get the lens off oh, i guess we just have to get these two snap ins uh, there's one on the other side too out of here Let's see how that goes. It's easily accessible. Maybe I should lift things up a little bit. And yeah, that's already out. It was easy. Let's try it on the other side. Maybe it's as easy. Yeah. Oh, yeah. <clears throat> Sorry. Drowning out. There's the lens and there's... Oh, that looks like a dead insect. <clears throat> okay. Yeah, it's a defect used LED spot. What do you expect? Okay. Some, and we have here, yeah, seven lenses for the seven LEDs. Oh, let me zoom down there. So on the first glance, there is a little bit of dirt in here, but as already mentioned, I saw, I think it was that insect. But looking here at the goo around these two solder blobs, which probably connect with the GU 5.3 connector at the back, mm, I'm not so sure. Uh, there's a lot of goo in here, actually. Okay, let me try to get the... Okay, and these are just test points. Of course, I don't know what to test there. But let me try to get the board out. Getting that board out was kind of nightmarish. I had great difficulties desoldering these two wires that came up from the back. The reason being, the board has a massive copper plate at the back yeah for heat distribution in addition of course it was glued in with some thermal goo adhesive and yeah here you see the two wires and yeah the copper plate is uh, thermally glued to that i think it's aluminium or another alloy back so this is not plastic this is actually aluminium or some alloy and yeah was hard work uh, please note these two screws they will become very important in a second because we will have to dig deeper do you notice that there are nowhere on the board for diodes side by side or a bridge rectifier chip containing four diodes with four pins and that these pads are labeled V- minus and V+, plus, so the bridge rectifier must be deeper inside. So I hope this will go smoothly. Yeah, seems to be. Just the screw, no problems at all. And now something else should give way. No, not really. Why not? Why do we have two screws there? If nothing gives way. Uh, let me fumble about it uh, off camera a little bit. Okay, I think I got it. Brute force is the answer. And you can detach that back here and this will oh no reveal some potted stuff 
but this is a real massive aluminium case and yeah there should be the bridge rectifier inside um yeah i will try to scrape off and this is soft uh to scrape that off off camera <laughs> this is getting crazy so below that relatively soft and easy to cut rubbery material we find another board and here we find a uh, yeah big ass capacitor lots of inductors yeah that was an inductor too i killed it sorry while scraping up the potting material uh yeah that's our connector <clears throat> to the next story in this layer cake and we have a, a, a real microcontroller here lots of pins but uh, yeah and did i mention it's double-sided and obviously it's going further down because you see we have here four solder bumps but we only have at the back two connectors and i still don't see four diodes which could form a bridge rectifier i mean here are two big ass diodes but not four uh, and did i mention these are real screws that go into <laughs> real threads yeah no self tapping crap i mean for something that you put together exactly once and then when it's broken it goes <clears throat> to the landfill this is such an overkill it's unbelievable anyway i try to desolder uh, these connections here and get that board off so much later i <laughs> managed to get that board off yeah besides the soldering which was awful again because a through hole and probably a lead free solder i had to work against the potting material yeah sucking the board down and the board is of course <laughs> i mean this is an led light bulb okay uh double sided and <clears throat> yeah here are your here's your bridge rectifier and two of the wires yeah i saw from above they belong to a electrolytic capacitor i try to dig that out next so i dug out that electrolytic here and it's yeah 35 uh, rubicon of course of course nothing cheap 35 volts 220 microfarads zlh uh, which is good i guess but yeah rated uh, for 105 degrees celsius and the yeah really massive pins here they are bent so that the <laughs> electrolytic will fit in between and then we have the four holes on the board other way around Wow. Uh, let me clean up the bench and then we <laughs> arrange all the parts in order and have a closer look at each. So AC 12 volts is coming in, is rectified on the back side of the board. And yeah, I found uh, within the potting material, the big ass inductor I broke off is rectified by these four diodes and filtered by this electrolyte here, 220 microfarads. And a lot of other things is happening here because we have a big ass multi pin package here remember that led bulb is dimmable anyway dc is sent up to the next level where we only have that single-sided board with a big ass copper heat sinking at the back with a glued to yeah the aluminium or some other alloy case of the lamp and nothing much comparably is happening here we only had this six pin package and something that looks like a power tranny and finally electric energy is converted to electromagnetic energy that is photons which are focused by that lens 
And now let's have a closer look at both boards. Let's start with the upper side of the lower board. We do have a fuse, two amps have one. We have three big ass inductors here, two diodes, yeah, another bigger capacitor and a lot of small capacitors and resistors around that 24 pin package. And the markings on that chip read, yeah, 0U, 2C, P1M. And I have absolutely nothing for you. Absolutely nothing. If you have any idea what chip that is, let me know in the comments. On the back side, we find the bridge rectifier with four discrete diodes. We have this little six pin package here. Yeah, an even smaller six pin package here. And then that looks again like a transistor or something. And everything else is just resistors and capacitors. I have absolutely nothing for you <laughs> in regards to that larger six pin package, which if you look closely, yeah, these two pins are bound together. These two pins are bound together is really only a four connection device labeled a 661NC and it's a T. So that's a transformer, really? Hmm. Uh, let me know in the comment section if you know more about that. The smaller six pin package and that's really, yeah, uh, it has six connections. Uh, the Q3 is a proper IC and it's labeled 13T. Unfortunately, I found nothing about an integrated circuit with a SMD package labeled 13T. Uh, give me some hints in the comment section, please, if you have an idea. And that's a proper transistor uh, labeled Q. Uh, but again, I found nothing for SMD packages of that type with a label 8W and then 1X. Absolutely nothing. Please help me out in the comment section. Uh, that is, if you can. The upper board with the LEDs uh, contains only two semiconductor packages, a lot of resistors which probably form a shunt to measure the current through the LEDs. And please note the center LED is of a different type than the six other LEDs around it. I find that very interesting. The label on the six pin package uh, U1 is uh, some Delta logo, 67L or G7L. Again, I came up with nothing, but it must be, yeah, <laughs> some integrated circuit. At least I have something for you for the Q1 here, the CDC W51. That's actually a bipolar NPN transistor BC868, 20 volts, 1 amp. Now that we know or don't know which chips are on here, yeah, but for that tranny, I measured around a little bit on the board to see, yeah, what's the layout with the LEDs. And uh, it's really astonishing. So uh, I have five volts here. It's not sparking. It's not dangerous. And if I connect that to V plus and V minus, yeah, the middle LED lights up. And yeah, you probably cannot see that. Uh, let me try to adjust the exposure. Sorry for maximum flicker effect here, but you can see it contains two LED chips, which are in series. So this runs at about six volts. The outer LEDs, and I have already mentioned that, are of a different type, but you can see that without lighting them up. They also contain two LED chips, so they also run at about six volts. So where was I? Ah, yeah, uh, connecting a five volts here, I can light up the center LED. <clears throat> uh, 
and I can light up that LED here. Sorry. I can light up that LED and now I have to, no, 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 no. I remember how they were. So here we go. No, this way around. Yeah. And then this way. No, I'm sorry. Yep. The black dot marks the cathode. Okay, so all LEDs are just fine. But the circuitry <laughs> is amazing. The general topology is that you have a three pairs of two LEDs which are in series. So D1, D2, D3, D4, D6, D7. And they are, yeah, all directly connected to V plus and V minus, each and every pair. That's it. That's the outer ring of LEDs that does the majority of the work. And then you have D7 in the middle. And D7 is also connected, yeah, with its anode to V plus, then goes through these, yeah, you remember these four big resistors here, that uh, is a shunt resistor of 50 ohms. And then we have here our bipolar and PN transistor. And the whole rest of the circuitry here on the board is just, just current regulation. Yeah, something has to drive the base here for that center diode. Without that center diode, that board would only consist of the six outer LEDs. That's it. Now, <clears throat> I have to admit the current regulation uh, so, yeah, complicated. Uh, uh, there's a reason for it. Remember, this is dimmable. So if the input voltage here drops, you want to go the current through the middle LED you want that also to go down. So in effect, <laughs> that whole thing here implements a voltage current converter. That is, it uh, yeah allows a current proportional to the input voltage through that middle diode. <laughs> uh, I, 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 uh, Obviously, obviously, the the word value engineering does not exist in Philip's vocabulary. I mean, uh, so naturally, the question arises: Is the upper board still working? And I, yeah, I'm not giving it 12 volts, but I'm giving it 10 volts. Yeah, just so, yeah, nothing explodes in my face. Oops, and contact, nope. Well, the outer LEDs are all working. So maybe they need 12 volts to light up and I can't see the analog instrument on my lab power supply very clearly <clears throat> because yeah, uh, I'm blinded by the light. An old Manfred Mann's song. Oh! Oh! Okay. Uh, enough of frying my <coughs> picture sensor here in the cam. But yeah, the top board obviously works just fine. And I don't know if you have noticed it, but uh, the brightness. Let me try to tune down a little bit the brightness here. Yeah, it's flickering again, I know. But the brightness of the center LED is negligible. And that was the teardown of the Philips. 
Master LED Sport 6.5 Watt for GU 5.4, 5.3, 5 5.4, whatever fittings. <laughs> Uh, another example in this case, not German, uh, but uh, yeah, you remember that here down about my toothbrush uh, card here, link in the description. Not about German, but uh, European or uh, the Netherlands, uh, over engineering. I mean, all that stuff just to have a seventh LED in the middle. And uh, yeah, the heavy lifting, of course, DC re rectification, uh, dimming is done by the lower board. So yeah, that lamp is a two PCB device. <laughs> Sorry, can't get over that. Anyway, till next time, bye.